to, to you. I want to just briefly, um, but importantly, address the tragedy just miles away in Highland Park. As we all know, yesterday should have been a day to come together with family and friends to celebrate our nation's independence. And instead, that community suffered a violent tragedy. Children, parents, grandparents, victims to a senseless act of gun violence. And Doug, who is here with me, he and I, of course, we mourn as you do for those who were killed, and we pray for those who were injured. And we all grieve, I know, for the lives that are forever changed in that community, including, of course, the students and the teachers of that community who have suffered great loss. And I don't need to tell NEA, we need to end this horror. We need to stop this violence. And we must protect our communities from the terror of gun violence. You know, I've said it before, enough is enough. I mean, here we are, and our nation is still mourning the loss of those 19 babies and their two teachers in Uvalde. This massacre was the most recent reminder in Uvalde of the risks that our children and our educators face every day. Teachers should not have to practice barricading a classroom. Teachers should not have to know how to treat a gunshot wound. And teachers should not be told that lives would have been saved if only you had a gun. Now, we have made some progress. For the first time in 30 years, our President Joe Madam Vice President, thank you for bringing us all together today. This convening could not be more urgent. Today, 31 FBI field offices are working in close coordination with our law enforcement partners across the country to investigate, disrupt, and prosecute the recent threats targeting historically black colleges and universities. I am in regular contact with our FBI team about these efforts. As with any ongoing investigation, I'm limited in what I can say about this specific matter, but allow me to be very clear. At the Justice Department, we believe the time to address illegal threats is when they are made, not after tragedy strikes. We also know that the threat against HBCUs and their students has deep historical roots. The Justice Department was founded during Reconstruction after the Civil War with the first principal task of combating those who used violence and threats of violence to prevent black Americans from exercising their civil rights. In the over 150 years since the founding of the department, the threats posed by hate-fueled criminal acts have taken on many different forms, but our task remains the same to use our resources and our legal authorities to prevent and confront bias-motivated violence and threats of violence. Shortly after the horrific attack in Atlanta one year ago today, I ordered an expedited review of the department's effort to combat hate crimes and hate incidents. As a result of that review, the department has taken steps to improve incident reporting, community outreach, and training and support of local law enforcement. The FBI has elevated criminal civil rights violations to its highest threat band. And we are using the expertise of our civil rights, 
national security, and criminal prosecutors to ensure a comprehensive approach to confronting unlawful acts of hate. As I recently said, after the department obtained hate crime convictions in the murder of Ahmed Arbery, no one in this country should have to fear hate-fueled violence. No one should fear that they are being attacked or threatened because of what they look like, where they are from, whom they love, or how they worship. The Justice Department has no tolerance for unlawful acts of hate. We will be relentless in our efforts to investigate, disrupt, and prosecute hate-fueled violence and threats of violence. Thank you all very much. Please welcome Deputy Secretary John Tian, Department of Homeland Security. Good afternoon, everyone. Vice President Harris, thank you for bringing us all together to discuss our administration's common and unified action to defend re threats against HBCUs and to defeat forces of hatred in our nation. Attorney General Garland, Secretary Cardona, colleagues from across the government and the HBC community, thank you for your partnership. As Secretary Mayorkas likes to say, our department, the Department of Homeland Security, is fundamentally a department of partnerships. This is at the core of what we do. Only through our combined efforts can we counter the threats of violence against campuses, houses of worship, critical infrastructure, and any racial or ethnic group. Exactly one year ago today, in my city, the city of Atlanta, violence struck the heart of who we are as a nation. As a proud Asian American, it also infected me, a resident of Atlanta, in a very personal and devastating way. Yet, that act of vile hatred spoke to a far more troubling trend that we track, evaluate, and work to defeat in the Department of Homeland Security every single day. The disturbing rise in targeted violence and terrorism perpetrated by individuals and groups motivated by a combination of violent extremist ideologies, personal grievances, racial and ethnic animus, and gender discrimination. The rise in targeted violence and terrorism affects individuals and communities across the nation. It is unacceptable anywhere it happens, and we and our partners are doing everything we can to defeat it. Domestic violent extremism represents one of the most significant terrorist threats to the homeland today. Hate crimes incidents continue to be prevalent in communities across the country. And it is within that context that we witnessed and reacted to the recent rash of threats against HBCUs. Let me state plainly, this behavior is unacceptable. Any use of racial slurs or denigrating stereotypes that stoke crimes of hate or any threats of violence will not be tolerated. It betrays the core values of equity, justice, and freedom that I personally defended for 24 years in the United States military. And at DHS, we stand alongside HBCUs and communities of color encountering any form of racism, discrimination, and harassment in word and in deed. That is why we are working alongside the Departments of Justice and Education to support HBCUs and other academic and faith-based organizations with information, intelligence, resources, and investments required to identify and mitigate potential threats. We will continue to share information about individuals and groups threatening violence. We will keep offering training on how to recognize and report threats, as well as how to best respond should an incident occur. We want to put resources and grants in the hands of universities to help enhance these organizations' physical security and strengthen risk mitigation capabilities, including on bomb prevention and active shooter preparedness. We want to build on the engagements that we have executed over the past several months. Our outreach to presidents of the HBCUs and their teams, our calls to state, local, tribal, territorial, faith-based, and other organizations to discuss 